I do like the look of a shiny phone, but when you're filming it for a review, make sure you've got a microfiber cloth. Hey, I'm Rob. Welcome back to Photobike. Honor, once a sub-brand of Huawei, known for their excellent high-quality mid-range devices, has since split from its parent company, Huawei. And today we're looking at their first phone they've released since the split, making it quite an interesting device to look at. But yeah, today we have the brand new Honor 50. Now the split from Huawei means a bit more than now they can go solo and start making their own devices, but actually means it doesn't come under the restrictions that Huawei have been placed under. So this is actually the first, I guess, Huawei type device to actually have Google services since the ban like two years ago. Now don't get me wrong, Huawei have been making excellent devices since, and they've come leaps and bounds in developing their own operating system and marketplace. It's way better than it was on day one. But in our other videos, such as my review on the Mate 40, everything about the phone was excellent but it was so hard to get behind because of the lack of the Google services. Especially if you work in the Google ecosystem where you need Gmail or Google Docs or you run a YouTube channel like we do, uh, you kind of need that YouTube app and those Google apps. The web-based clients are nowhere near as easy to use. So I am super excited to see that we can get a little hint of what Huawei would be like again if they had Google services. Now it's no secret that this phone was definitely developed while Honor and Huawei were still together. So it's gonna bear quite a few similarities to some Huawei devices, but that's not a bad thing. Um, it just means that for the Western market at least, it's probably gonna be the superior brand now because of those Google services. On the looks of the device, on the front, it looks like a nice great big black slab of glass as we're quite accustomed to seeing nowadays. It's got quite a gorgeous curved HD plus display with a little bit of a hole punch camera on the front. It's got an underscreen's fingerprint scanner, which is pretty snappy. USB-C super fast charging, dual SIM card slot, no SD card expansion, unfortunately, and no headphone jack. Always a shame, but I guess we're in the realm of Bluetooth headphones everywhere nowadays, but, but still, I always prefer to have a nice pair of wired headphones when I'm using my devices. Now that really nice, smooth, curve continues all the way around to the back glass which is this nice very glossy very shiny mirror of a back which is just going to be an absolute fingerprint magnet the honor logo in the corner is quite nice and subtle very kind of understated and professional looking there's nothing worse than having a really nice premium feeling device and having a really big gaudy logo on it although our black sleek shiny finish device is nice uh, <laughs> Talking about Gordy, there is a version of this phone where you can get the Honor branding all over the back. And I actually quite like it. If anything, it's a bit more interesting than this standard glass sandwich as you get in these devices nowadays. Other than that, the unique feature of the back of this is this dual camera module setup. There's uh, four cameras in here. The top one being quite notable as it's 108 megapixel, which is then paired with quite underwhelming 8 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel depth sensor for those bokeh effects, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. Under the hood, it's rocking a mid range Snapdragon 778G, which has 5G support, which is a perfectly reasonable mid range processor. You're definitely not going to have any problems with the device when it comes to power. It'll be able to play all the games and be efficient enough to last all day on a charge pretty decently. It's not the top of the range, but it's not a top of the range device. But it's not a surprise that they're not rocking the top end processor in this thing. It comes in both 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes storage. The lower end one coming with six gig of RAM and the higher end with eight gig of RAM. Both of them retail for £449 and £429 respectively, which is a great mid range price. It's got a 4300 milliamp hour battery with an absolutely super quick 66 watt fast charger, which apparently can charge the device up to 70% in 20 minutes. It doesn't come with wireless charging though, so you're stuck with just super fast charging. Looking at it, when you're watching and listening to content on the device, there seems to only be one mono speaker on the bottom, which sounds okay, but it's a bit of a shame having a device come out nowadays without stereo speakers, as it is a noticeable difference when you're trying to watch any kind of content on your phone. But yeah, the screen is probably one of the highlights of the device. It's an OLED panel, it's super bright, super vibrant, 
It's 1080p by 2340, so if you turn the device sideways, it's like 1080p ultra wide kind of aspect ratio, but it's also 120 hertz. It makes it feel super snappy and nice to use and great for gaming as well. Now it's good that it has a great screen as one of the main selling features of this phone is the camera. When in standard photo mode, photos come out nice and sharp and crisp, but they're not that full 108 resolution. You have to switch to the high res photo mode to get that full, super large image. But it seems to take pictures very well and the processing behind it seems to do a pretty good job in most situations. The colors in the photos seem pretty good and pretty natural overall. Where it lacks a little bit though is that 108 megapixel main shooter is great. The other cameras definitely seem to take a bit of a back seat. The 8 megapixel ultra wide is fine. It does the job, it can widen an image and it's a nice thing, but with that 108 megapixel lens, you probably just wanna shoot with that and just take a few more steps back really. Uh, the depth sensor obviously just is there for the bokeh modes, which is fine. And then the macro camera, not like a really cool implementation like, like the Oppo X3 we took a look at a little while ago. But the macro lens actually had a little ring light built in and had loads of features around it. The macro lens on this is pretty average at best. Really, it seems they've just trapped some other camera in there just to add some more cameras to the feature list on the thing. Really, I don't see the point in it, and I think phone companies should just stop doing it, really. It's not needed. If anything, it's just bumping up the cost a little bit when you could just not have a macro lens and have a great main shooter and maybe an ultra wide for those few situations where you need an ultra wide. And of course, the selfie camera, 32 megapixels, which is also really great, and it seems to perform fine. It looks, especially here in my the nice studio lighting conditions. It looks great, pretty nice, pretty selfies out of it. But yeah, the Honor 50 is running uh, what Honor calls their Magic UI, which is Android 11 with their skin on top and a few of their extra features and app stores and stuff. It's pretty close to stock Android, which is nice. It comes out the app drawer enabled by default, but you can turn it on. You can pretty much make this feel very much like stock Android, which is really nice to see. Pre-baked in, it also has Google News on the left um, and loads of Google Apps pre-installed, which seem to work completely fine. It's great to see Google Apps back on a device like this as the only reason I can't be rocking a Huawei phone nowadays is I need those Google Apps to be honest and it's great to see back in this device. Now it's taken a few things from the old Huawei book. It's got all like honor sharing and honor style linking between devices. Everything you would have seen with the Huawei share and Huawei linking you've seen on their devices. Obviously there's not as much of a range of devices in the honor brand, but if they were to expand a bit into laptops and stuff a bit more, um, maybe that might become pretty cool. When it comes to gaming, I rocked a bit of Call of Duty on it. Uh, you'll see some footage of that now. It seems to run completely fine. Everything kind of cranked a bit. 120 hertz display is really nice. It also has about 300 hertz polling rate, so it's nice and responsive when you're touching the screen. No complaints to me there. The really steep curve on the corners as well has great palm rejection. I never really noticed the screen kind of going off on its own world while I was uh, holding it with a really tight grip and touching it all over. It seemed to work completely fine. So the screen is definitely one of the highlights. Yeah, the 778G is definitely not the highest end processor in the world. Definitely more than capable for modern gaming on phones nowadays. Overall, the Honor 50 definitely stands out in the crowd of mid-range devices in having a super high quality finish and very premium feel. And the inclusion of a massive 108 megapixel camera in there is definitely a big selling point. In every other regard though, the device is very much shows its skin as being a mid-range device. And obviously it's not, it's nothing too special about it, but it definitely has a few interesting things that might be worth a look at. At the very least, if you were a big fan of Huawei and have been really saddened that you can't use them because of the lack of Google services, it's nice to get a little bit of that Huawei back in our hands, even if it's not actually then with that full Android experience that we've come to know. If anything, like I said earlier, it's definitely not a secret that this was developed when they were still with Huawei. That would explain why it's not that impressive and has that many crazy features because they were just pretty much ready to manufacture and ship these when all the, uh, the when the split was happening. So I guess uh, with the little bit of the software changes they made to get this working back with the old Google services again, uh, it was all the time they needed to ship these out. I guess the only other option would have been to throw away these devices. So it makes sense. 
If anything, this sparks a bit more interest in me because I would love to see the next device. And if that's still a Huawei kind of device, maybe the, the one after that or the one after that. Depends how long it takes them to get out of the R&D that was taken when they were split from Huawei. Because I'll be really interested to see and how Honor can bloom having their complete independence and their own shift in design as now they're no longer going to be just that mid-range Huawei brand. Now they can be whatever they want to be and yes this is a very good and premium phone but it's still just an old mid-range Huawei in the end and I can't wait to see what Honor does next.